Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss new words, theme, title and summary of the chapter number 3, Tea Water by William Douglas from class 12th English textbook, Flamingo. Let me tell you about the author first. William Orville Douglas was an American jurist and politician who served as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Nominated by President Franklin Roosevelt, Douglas was confirmed at the age of 40, one of the youngest justices appointed to the court. His term lasting 36 years and 211 days is the longest in the history of the Supreme Court. After graduating in 1920 with a BA in English and Economics, he taught English and Latin at Yakima High School for two years, hoping to earn enough to attend law school. He graduated from Columbia Law School in 1925 and joined the Yale Law School faculty. The following excerpt is taken from Of Men in Mountains by William O. Douglas. In this essay, he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it. Before explanation of the story, let's focus on the words and expressions used in the text. So the first word is treacherous. Treacherous means dangerous or unpredictable danger or behavior. Skinny means very thin. As you can see in the photograph also, boy is very thin. Subdued my pride. Subdued means quiet or calm or depressed and pride of course self-respect. So if we combine them to suppress or restrain the intensity of self-respect and confidence. Aversion. Aversion means dislike, aping. To imitate, to copy somebody, and bruiser, a person who is tough and enjoys fight or argument, or we can say someone who is very strong. Next word is misadventure, an incident that turns out to be a disaster or mishap. Bob to the surface like a cork. Move up swiftly to the water surface like a piece of cork. Flailed at the surface. What is flailed? Flailed means to swing or to wave. So here it is. To swung arms or legs forcefully on the surface of the water. Curtain of life fell. To indicate that life has ended or a near death experience back and forth across the pool, to swim across the swimming pool from one side to the another, fishing for landlocked salmon, to go fishing for a specific variety of salmon available in certain lakes. Let me tell you about the theme now. In this excerpt, William Douglas talks about his fear of water and how he finally overcomes it by his courage, determination, hard work, strong willpower, perseverance and the desire to learn. If these are practiced, we can definitely achieve success in all our endeavors. The message that William Douglas is trying to convey through the story is that it is not death but the fear of death that instills terror and anxiety in our minds. Clinging to past fears can spoil one's present. Hence, rigorous and persistent efforts are needed to shake off the fears of past. We have to let go of our past fears to enjoy our present and future. I'll explain the title now. The story is appropriately entitled Deep water, as in it, author recounts his fear of swimming following an incident in which he had been swept away by a wave. Another incident which further aggravated his fear 
was when a bully pushed him into the deep end of the swimming pool and he nearly drowned but he overcame his fear through determination and strong will he even hired an instructor to help him to learn swimming he challenged himself and swam different rivers lakes and other water bodies to overcome his fear the title also signifies that narrator's fear was deep rooted so in short the title is appropriate i'll summarize the story now deep water is about william douglas journey of overcoming the fear of water which is deeply rooted in him since childhood the writer narrates his experience he was 10 or 12 years old when he had joined the ymca swimming pool to learn swimming he did not go to the yakima river to swim as it was considered dangerous this shows that he had a prior fear of water he felt that pool at ymca was safer the shallow area of the pool was only 2 to 3 feet deep while the deep area was 9 feet in depth the slope from the shallow area to the deep area was not steep the narrator had developed an aversion to water when he was 3 or 4 his father had taken him to the beach in california the waves knocked him down and swept over him he was buried under water and his breath was gone he was terrorized by the strong force of the waves and developed an aversion to water at a very young age when william joined the swimming pool at the ymca the fear of water resurfaced in his mind he gathered confidence by watching other boys swim and tried to copy them he had done this twice or thrice at different occasions and had started gaining confidence when the incident happened he had a narrow escape from death one day he went to pool little early there was no one else so he sat on the side of the pool to wait for others it had not been long since william had been sitting by the pool when a boy arrived he was around 18 years of age he had a well built body with rippling muscles he seemed to be a bully he asked william if he wanted to be thrown into the pool the boy picked william and threw him into the deep end of the swimming pool william landed on the surface of the pool in the same position as he had been sitting in he swallowed water as he sank into the pool he was frightened but he used his intelligence and on his way down the pool he planned to push himself up when he reached the bottom he thought that he would make a big jump to the surface lie on his back and swim to the edge of the pool William took a long time to reach the bottom of the pool. It seemed that the depth was 90 feet instead of 9 feet. He could not hold his breath and felt as if his lungs would burst. When his feet touched the bottom of the pool, he gathered all his strength and jumped upwards. He had thought that the next moment he would come out of the pool, but the opposite happened. His movement upward was slow. and when he opened his eyes he saw water all around which was yellowish in color william got scared and tried to grab something a rope which would help him reach the edge of the pool but he got nothing other than water william was at a loss of breath and tried to scream for help but no sound came out of his mouth his nose and eyes came out of the water but his mouth remained in it William waved his hands at the surface of the water for help but he swallowed water and choked he tried to pull his legs up but they were very heavy and lifeless he felt that something was pulling him downwards towards the depth of the pool he screamed but his voice did not go out of the water once again william started going down towards the bottom of the pool He sank into the pool and the journey down seemed endless. He opened his eyes. There was water all around. It had a yellowish glow and he could not see through it. This terrorized him. He says that his feeling cannot be explained, but it can only be understood by those who have experienced a similar situation. He was screaming in the water. He was unable to move due to the fear. 
His screams also froze. Only his heart beat and the beating in his head indicated that he was alive. Then he started going downwards into the pool for the third time. He tried to breathe but swallowed water instead. The light went out as he drowned again. Then he stopped making efforts to save himself. His legs became lifeless and his brain experienced a blackout. The fear ended. He did not panic. He was not afraid of drowning anymore. He felt sleepy, was tired to jump up. He experienced complete freedom from the fear of death. He lay in complete peace. When William gained consciousness, he was lying on his stomach beside the pool and was vomiting. He heard someone scolding the boy who had pushed him into the pool. After many hours, William walked home. He felt sick and shivered. He kept on crying as he lay on the bed. He was unable to eat food. The fear kept on haunting him for many days. The incident made him physically and emotionally weak. The slightest exertion upset him, making him wobbly in the knees and sick to his stomach. The fear of water remained with William as he grew up. On the boating trips to different lakes in the main region, New Hampshire, Deschutes, Metolius, Columbia, Bumping Lake, the fear followed him. His fishing trips were destroyed as he did not enjoy boating and swimming due to the fear. William tried to ward off the fear but was unable to get rid of it. Finally, in the month of October, he hired an instructor to teach him swimming. He would practice for an hour each day, five days a week. The instructor put a belt around William's waist. The rope went through an overhead pulley and was held by the instructor. Whenever the instructor loosened the rope, he went down into the water and the fear would return. It was after three months of practice that he got comfortable. Then the instructor taught him to inhale outside the water and exhale underwater. In the third phase of the learning process, the instructor taught him to kick the water surface with his legs. When William had perfected each phase, he compiled them. In the month of April, the instructor told William that now he could swim. He wanted to be sure that all the fear had left him. So he went to Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire and dived into it and swam for two miles. The terror returned only once when he was in the middle of the lake. William laughed at the terror and saw that the terror vanished and he resumed his swimming. William still had some doubt about the fear. So he hurried towards the western direction. He went up to the Teton, reached Conrad Meadows, walked up to the Conrad Creek Trail to meet Glacier. He camped at the meadow by the warm lake. The next morning, he dived into the lake. He swam across it to the other end and returned. He shouted with joy as he had overcome his fear. The experience had a great importance in William's life. He realized that death was peaceful and only the fear of death was fearful. He recollects the words of President Roosevelt. He had said that all we have to fear is fear itself. As William had experienced death and the fear of death, his desire to live grew immensely. He felt released from fear and was free to walk up the trails and climb up the mountains fearlessly. He was a free man. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur.